Hi everybody. Uh, today is uh, a Friday, the day before before your exam. So there is one thing that uh, that uh, uh, about autogenic inhibition, reciprocal inhibition. It seems everybody has problems. So I, I thought the best the best way to 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 describe it. I make a video and I send out to all of you, and you read it. Hopefully, this is gonna make it clear for you. If you have any question tomorrow about it. so. <clears throat> See, the, first of all, we need to understand what is a tonic, because uh, Sandy sent me uh, one link, everybody else sent me a link, which is a little bit confusion here. Autogenic inhibition and reciprocal inhibition. What are these two things, okay? First of all, let me just describe what is autogenic inhibition as a physiology point in the body. What is reciprocal inhibition as a physiological point in the body? It's very easy. Reciprocal, <coughs> uh, 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 the, 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 the first thing is, uh, I, I talk about rec reciprocal means opposite. Okay, autogenic means the same muscle. Reciprocal inhibition means that, that any time I contract one muscle, the opposite muscle at the same time will relax to allow this movement happen. So that's very easy. So it means if I want to contract my biceps, at the same time, my triceps will relax to allow me this, the, to, to do this happen. This is, a, this is technically is a physiological effect. It's not a technique, it's not like a massage therapy technique or anything. Just one muscle contracts, the other muscle gets relaxed. This muscle is the antagonist to this muscle. So that's the reason we call it reciprocal inhibition. Inhibition means it doesn't work. So this muscle contract, this muscle relax. This is called reciprocal inhibition. I'm not talking about technique yet, I'm just talking about physiology. Autogenic inhibition means this. Means if any time, any time, if a muscle is too tight and if I try to stimulate GTO, which is the organ inside the tendon, that GTO stimulation will send a message to the same muscle to relax it. Very simple. If a muscle is tight and I stimulate GTO organ, I can do this with the with the GTO technique, I can do this with O and I technique to stimulate the, the, the GTO organ or Golgi tendon organ. This will send a message to the same muscle to relax that muscle. This effect is called autogenic inhibition. Okay, so I use GTO to relax the same muscle. Good, so we learned these two, these two physiological points. One is autogenic inhibition means the stimulation of GTO will relax the same muscle. The second point is reciprocal inhibition, means any muscle gets contracted, the opposite muscle is going to be relaxed. When we learn these two, how do we use them for, for using it for the techniques, okay? So <clears throat> I tell you first, how do we use autogenic inhibition? If you remember the one I said that, Golgi tendon organ stimulation will relax the same muscle. How do I use this technique? The, the technique is called Autogenic inhibition relaxation. We also call it hold relax technique. We also call it contract relax technique. Contract relax and hold relax are very similar, but I will tell you what's the little difference between them. How can I do that? Okay? To do that, as if you remember I said the muscle is tight, I'm going to use, I'm going to stimulate the GTO to relax the same muscle. That's called autogenic inhibition relaxation. How do I do that? If I isometrically contract the same muscle, I'm not going to stimulate the, the GTO. The, the only way I can stimulate the GTO is if I put the muscle in a slightly stretched position. It means if my biceps is too tight. I said, let me show it on Ella. Okay? I say, Ella, can you see? Can you get Ella? Yeah? I say, let's say Ella's uh, uh, biceps is too tight and he's holding like that and he cannot, she cannot relax it, right? What I do is this. I'm going to say, I'm going to slowly put, I'm going to put this uh, uh, elbow in a little bit extended position. I mean, I stretch a little bit biceps. By stretching this, I put pressure on the tendon. When I put the pressure on the tendon, then I say, okay, now push to my hand. When client is pushing to my hand, I'm technically stimulating GTO. Not by GTO technique or by O and I technique, just by asking her to push to my hand in a little stretch position. What does this technique is doing? This technique is stimulating the GTO, 
and this is going to send a, a message to the muscle and will relax the muscle. This is called autogenic inhibition. The same thing I told you before. Anytime you want to do autogenic inhibition, you, you just push to uh, isometrically contract the same muscle, push to my hand, hold it, one, two, three, four, five, and then this muscle already relaxed. Now you can stretch it. That's the purpose of this technique, to stretch the muscle at the end. This is called autogenic inhibition relaxation. This is also called hold relax technique, which is the same thing. Hold relax, the same thing as autogenic inhibition relaxation. What is contract relax? Contract relax is the same thing, but the only difference is when you hold the arm in this position and you want to start the isometric contraction, push to my hand, you just ask, the, you just allow little contraction happens too. You just don't do it only isometric. You change it to a little isotonic, which is concentric isotonic. Okay, so you just push to my hand. I allow a little bit also contraction happens. And then I say, okay, now relax. And then I try to stretch it. You understand that? So this is called the contract relax, which is the same as hold relax, which is the same as autogenic inhibition relaxation technique. The basic rule we use for these techniques is the autogenic inhibition effect that I told you, GTO will relax the same muscle. I hope this is clear. Let's go to reciprocal inhibition relaxation. How do we use the second rule? I told you, anytime any muscle is contracted, the opposite muscle will relax at the same time. This has nothing to do with GTO or a spindle. It's just the basic rule of every action in your body. So, reciprocal inhibition relaxation is very easy. As I said, if your biceps is too tight, so you contract the triceps, okay? Because when you contract the triceps, it will send a message to your biceps to relax your biceps. That's very easy. If I have, if I have tight flexors, instead of working on flexors because it's very painful, I start working on extensors. I say push to my hand, client will push to your hand, and then this muscle gets tight, and then at the same time, the opposite muscle is the muscle you want to work on it. Becomes relaxed. Not by your technique, becomes relaxed by your brain. And then it makes it easier for you to work on this spastic muscle. This is called reciprocal inhibition relaxation. The only thing I want to clarify here, your green book, page 81 in your green book explains that. It's okay, I just, I just, Ella, can you move your head? Page 81 of your green book explains that that reciprocal inhibition relaxation by mistake is called also agonist contraction technique. Even though you use the antagonist muscle, but your book saying that it is agonist contraction technique. So, if they tell you, okay, how do we do agonist contraction of biceps? Don't think this is autogenic inhibition. No, it is reciprocal inhibition. It means you have to contract triceps first and then stretch biceps. Okay, so anytime you see this, anytime you see the word hold relax or contract relax, it is autogenic inhibition. Anytime you see the word agonist contraction, it is reciprocal inhibition technique. This is the wrong name. Why they chose that is not my fault and it's not Milad's fault with the, on the other side of the video, but I'm just telling you to clarify that. I hope these things, I, I told you, if you don't understand that, please email me tonight. Maybe I can send you an example or something. But I, I think if you watch this video a couple of times, it's going to be very clear for you. And then you can answer all the questions. Okay? Thank you. I hope 95% uh, 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 of you failed to pass tomorrow. And then the other five, we fail. We want to figure out what to do after. So thank you to Ella and Mila to make this video. And I'm going to send this video for you. Bye-bye.